Now, the second part is all about integration of the social login into your existing home page. That includes how do you get an access token? The integration number one is that we write some code that turns an OAuth authorization code into an OAuth access token. Now, the second part of what we do today is that we integrate this sign in with LinkedIn button with our code that we have written. So this is our homepage. And on this homepage, we would like to have all of this functionality connected to the sign in with LinkedIn button. Now we have to write some code. Previously, the access token was some static string that we put in. And we used that access token later on in order to call the me API of LinkedIn. And we use the same access token later on to call the email address API of LinkedIn. Now, what needs to happen before we can actually call these APIs? We need to turn the authorization code into an access token. And before that, we need to capture the authorization code. I will make the source code available for you so you can follow along, concentrate on what I'm doing here. And you will get this source code on the link that pops up here. So let's first turn this authorization code into an access token. So I'm just going to copy my function that calls an API. It will be helpful to just take whatever we already have in the worksheet for LinkedIn on the token endpoint. So we can just copy paste. Now, first thing we need is we need to have the URL. The URL is up here. Next thing is we need to change the method. So instead of a get, this is now a post. And we need to change the headers. But we need to replace it by form data. All right. As you can see here, we transfer the parameters with form data. And these key value pairs are exactly the same as before. We just need to format them a little bit so that they match. All right, so this is our API call. It's a post to the access token endpoint. And it's already pre-configured for our application that we have created with the client ID and the client secret. Now we need to integrate this get access token call into our main method, the access token can actually be removed. Access token is what we create, not what goes in. And the done function is going to be replaced by calling the next API. And the way we do it is like this. So what we need to do now is we need to get the access token out from the response that comes back. So we take the access token and we say the access token is in a res dot access token. We can remove this static variable here. Now, as you might have noticed, we still need the auth code, the authorization code. It's usually delivered via our query parameter on the front end side. So we need to write the redirect endpoint. Redirect endpoint is the one that LinkedIn sends the auth code to. And we need to write the redirect endpoint. Writing the redirect endpoint basically means that we need to write a API or a web service that can receive an authorization code and trigger all of these next steps. So this code that we're writing here is actually the perfect point for also doing the redirect endpoint. We just need to write a listener basically that listens to the requests from LinkedIn that are redirected from LinkedIn to our redirect endpoint. And then we can trigger all the other API functionality. Now let's do that. And the way I do it is that I will 
write this Node.js API as a Lambda function on the AWS infrastructure. Then I will put that Lambda function behind an AWS API gateway so it can be reached from the outside. Now on AWS, there are handlers in order to handle incoming requests. And I'll just copy some code in here for handling a HTTP request or an API request that's coming from the outside. And I'll walk you through it. Um, the very interesting part is the second half of it. So um, it's the if event. An event is something that's triggered from the outside. And we have an HTTP method that can trigger that event. We basically filter it down with the switch case here. So it will be only a GET request from the outside that can trigger anything here. And then we further specify what conditions need to hold for that event. Uh, here we say that there need to be two query string parameters, the first one being the code query string parameter and the second one being the state query string parameter, right? And this is what usually um, is delivered by the linked in OAuth or by all OAuth on the redirect endpoint. Then we extract those two parameters, the state and the code parameter, because they are transferred as URL parameters, we need to decode them, URL decode them before we can use them, right? So this is what happens here. We do a URL decode of the state query parameter and a URL decode of the code query parameter. The next thing we do is when we're triggered is we call the main method. So where's our main method? The main method now needs to take um, two parameters, not only one, it needs to take the auth code first and then the done method. So now what's the done method? The done method is also defined in this initial handler and the done method basically produces the HTTP response of our redirect endpoint. So now that we've written the handler, we need to remove the call to the main method because the main method is not called whenever the uh, code is started up but only when the trigger is executed, right? So main is now called from within the trigger, from within the handler, and we need to remove it basically um, from here. So what happens when a request comes in, when the redirect request from LinkedIn is coming to our redirect endpoint? Well, then this handler is triggered, the event goes up, uh, it's checked that the incoming method is a get method. It's checked that there is a code and a state parameter coming in. And then we trigger our main method. In the main method, we get the authorization code. And the authorization code is now exchanged into an access token. Once we have this access token, we call two APIs. First, the, the me API to get first name and last name. And then we get the, we call the email API in order to get the email address. The result will, in the error case, be a error message. And in the success case, we do the redirect. I will add a little bit of code. How do we put all of this together and actually to work? I told you that I'm going to use AWS Lambda and an API gateway in order to publish this. But you could use any other technology in order to do that. I go to my console, my Lambda console, and I create a function, LinkedIn Social, Node.js is okay. I need to set some permissions to work with the API gateway and receive triggers from the API gateway. So I create this function. Very good. And what I'll do now is I will upload the code. So in order to upload my source code on the AWS Lambda, I need to take the source code and the node modules, create a little compressed bundle and upload it. Right, so now I go back to my newly created Lambda function. 
upload as a zip file, upload, take my archive, save it. So now there you have it. Um, this is our upload and you can see the source code also in this little editor here, at least if the source code is not too big. All right, um, I think that's it for Lambda. What we now need to do is we need to configure uh, a AWS API gateway and we need to connect our Lambda function with the API gateway. So if you need some more help in connecting your Lambda function with the API gateway and in setting up your first API gateway from scratch on AWS, then watch my other video that's gonna pop up here. So I'll just do this really quickly. I'll go here to the designer, add a trigger, select trigger API gateway, and then I have already created a couple of API gateways that I have. Um, so I have this API and I will gonna put this on prod and it's gonna be an open API and boom. Very good. So this is configured. All right, so now we have a endpoint. We have a URL for our API or for our redirect endpoint that we write. This redirect endpoint in turn calls a number of other APIs, three so far. So it calls the access um, token endpoint. It calls the me API and the email API. And the whole thing is again an API. This API is available under this URL. So I'll just copy that URL. So what I need to do now is I need to put this URL of the redirect endpoint into my configuration one at the developer portal. So it is accepted as a valid redirect endpoint. And two, I need to put this into my um, code that is triggered when I click the blue log in with LinkedIn button. Okay, so this is my API endpoint for the redirect endpoint. So I go back to the developer portal of LinkedIn. I have my app too. And here I have the authorized redirect URLs for your app. I can have several. I already have one in there from our first test. What I'll do is I will add just another redirect endpoint. Um, this is completely valid to have two or several in there. And I update it. Now, I need to put this redirect endpoint in all places where redirect endpoint is required. So usually the redirect endpoint is required in a URL encoded manner. So I go to my URL encoder, put my new URL for the redirect endpoint in there encoded. And now I have the URL encoded URL. And I need to go to my home page where I trigger the authorization endpoint from this blue little button. And here is the redirect URI. Right? We need to exchange that to our newly created redirect endpoint, which is this one. And then there's another place where I need to have a redirect endpoint. And this is when I exchange my authorization code into an access token. So this is in here. And we need to put the redirect URI here as a unencoded form because it's not part of the URL. So of course, now I need to do a redeployment of our Lambda function, but this is super quick. Upload a zip file, take the new zip file, save it. I go to my homepage that I've updated. And on this home page, it should now link to the authorization endpoint of LinkedIn, including the new redirect URL. So now let's see what happens when I click on this blue button. Now I'm coming back to LinkedIn. This is already good. We've had this in the beginning. 
as well. So this basically just shows that this is a valid client ID and that the redirect URI was discovered. So I can just click sign in here. Now I get redirected back to my redirect endpoint, which is a Lambda function. And now we get redirected to our um, 302 target afterwards. We have now created a social login functionality. You now have in your redirect endpoint in the API, the Lambda function that we have written, you have access to the email address, to the name of the user, and the user only had to click, didn't have to enter any information. Now, of course, having the data just in a variable in your source code is not enough. You want to push it to your mailing list provider. And how this is done, I will show you in the next video. So stay tuned for the next episode. Hope to see you there. Subscribe and like this video if it was helpful to you. Thank you.